Hi, this is Reg Atwal, and welcome to another episode of Book Videos on Reg Atwal TV. This is the book that I've got for today. It's The Exponential Organizations, sometimes referred to as EXO, uh, created by the Singularity University. It's actually a university book created by the Singularity University by Salim Ismail and also with Michael Malone, and you can see there, Yuri Van Geest. So, well done, guys, for putting this book together. It was actually gifted to me uh, to an event that I went to. And then I ended up going to the bookshop, and I saw stacks of these piled up. So it's obviously a best-selling book. It's doing extremely well. It was published back in 2014. And it talks about this, this exponential organization. How do you build one? And they refer to this as the EXO. It's like a new way of building an organization. And it's packed full of case studies of what's happened around the world uh, since 2014. But I'm going to read a few things out to you, hopefully leave you with one or two really good ideas that you can consider using for your businesses. And also maybe Google the book and see if there's a way that you can uh, grab a copy for yourself uh, in the future and study it. Because it, it, it's almost here 315 pages um, and it's full of a lot of content, a lot of models, graphs, research. So one of the things it says is it, going back to um, understanding, you know, what is an EXO and how has this come about? It says that there's a case of Eastman Kodak, and I'm sure most of you know the Kodak story, which declared bankruptcy back in 2012 after having it invented and then rejected the digital camera. At around the same time Kodak was closing its doors, the startup Instagram, three years in business, and just with 13 employees, was bought by Facebook for a billion dollars. So on one side, you've got Kodak that are hitting bankruptcy. And I remember back in the day, I think there must have been about 135,000 people that were potentially going to be laid off. And here you've got this small little startup called uh, Instagram, with 13 employees, that's going to be bought out by Facebook for a billion dollars. Um, so ironically, this happened while Kodak still owned the patents for digital photography. So one of the missteps in the book it talks about is this industry change for Kodak to Instagram was not isolated. It wasn't an isolated event. Competition for many of the American Fortune 500 companies is no longer coming from China or India. And it's noted that today it's increasingly coming from two guys in a garage with a startup leveraging the exponentially growing technologies. You know, and you can go back and his case studies are about YouTube and Google and Groupon and what's happened with Facebook over the years. And if you think about the crisis right now, with a lot of people working from home, you know, they're converting their bedrooms, they're converting their lounges, their dining area, the garages are being used. There are many new startups that are going to be created in 2020 that could become the next EXO company, okay, the exponential organization. So it talks about, you know, welcoming us to the new world of the EXO, uh, and that, that's in place where, as with Kodak, neither age nor size nor reputation nor even current sales guarantee that you'll be around tomorrow. And there's many businesses this year, unfortunately, are going to go bust because of the crisis. And smaller companies, smaller startups will come along, which will take on board the big brands. On the other hand, it's also a place where if you can build an organization that is sufficiently scalable, so that Key word to remember from today's book video intro to this book is scalability, fast moving, and smart. You may enjoy success, EXO success, to a degree never before possible, and all with a minimum of resources and time. We have entered the age of the billion dollar startup and soon the trillion dollar corporation. Wonder who's going to become the first true trillion dollar corporation where the best companies and institutions will be moving at seemingly light speed. If you haven't transitioned into being an exponential organization, the EXO as well, it will not only seem as uh, though your competition is racing away from you, but also, like Kodak, that you are sliding backward, backwards at breakneck speed. 
and you've been out of uh, the game, knocked out of into oblivion, and no longer really competing with what's going on. So you know that's a you know sort of quick introduction there of 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 what's an e EXO is and how it all sort of started. I also recommend you go to uh, check out the bio and the comment details. You'll get a link uh, to the authors to to the, to their company and also to Singularity University. I decided to join one of their local chapters recently. I've been on some of their webinars as well. Fantastic organization based out of California and now spread globally with their chapters. So you must go and check them out uh, and, and find out a little bit more about what they're doing. So I'm going to refer to a, a few more areas in the book to, to, to give you a few more ideas. It's packed with different steps, but one of the things it talks about in the book is about rent don't own. Okay, So if you're going to scale and grow with speed and keep it lean, rent don't own. You don't need to have a 10,000 square feet headquarters and things are going to change in the future when it comes to people establishing themselves. You don't need to own everything yourself. You can rent. So it talks about that could be in the context of facilities, equipment, computing, or even people. The concept of renting rather than owning is a major factor contributing to the EXO's agility and flexibility. And that, thus is success. This too can seem as the culmination of long-term trend. We can see that with 2020 already what's going on. Over the decades, business owners have steadily moved from viewing business through the lens of a balance sheet to instead focusing on profit and loss. That is, emphasizing the primacy of profits over ownership. Much of the movement has grown out the realization that the ownership of assets, even mission critical, is better handled by experts. So in that sense, the rise of EXOs is deepening of the specialization trend that started 10,000 years ago. Focus on those areas, okay, focus on those areas in which you are truly outperforming. This not only is about maximizing profits, but in a world with Pervasive digital reputational systems also sets your image at the highest possible level. Uh, and one of the books it refers to by Tyler Cohen says that in the title of the book, Average is Over. So really, in summary, you know, this, this chapter that I'm on right now and this section about rent, don't own, can apply to pretty much any aspect of your business. But in summary, it's talking not about building your balance sheet and assets. It's about p and it's about profitability. And if you look at companies like Amazon today, really they've gone beyond just profitability. It's also about free cash flow. You know, what can you create that is giving you free cash flow on a regular basis? Another area it talks about is trust beats control and open beats closed. And it talks about vision, you know, uh, what are you doing, purpose, why are you doing it, your business model, what will fuel you as you're doing it? Wow and uniqueness factors. What sets you apart from others and values? What matters to you most? Um, in our own organization, RTS Global Partners, with a lot of family businesses and entrepreneurial companies we worked with, we also have a toolkit called VIP, vision, where are you going, intentions, what must happen to get there, and purpose, why are you doing it? And with families, we also build something called a family values charter, and I'm really happy to see that in this book, they talk about vision, purpose, your business model, wow factors, and values. And I feel that there's a lot of uh, congruency with what we've been doing for many years with companies. I won't talk about the next bit in detail, but I'm just going to throw out there that another really cool area that I found really interesting was everything is measurable and anything is knowable. And it just talks about data and information and how the world has changed, and how you use that information to scale scale your business. Uh, another aspect here is ignition. Talks about technology risk. Will it work? Market risk. Will people buy the product? Execution risk. Uh, is the team able to function and pivot as needed? So this this heading here is ignition, technology risk, market risk, execution risk and then it breaks down all those areas in tremendous detail. 
One of the things that I really enjoyed about the book was this, this concept that they've created called MTP, Massive Transformational Purpose. Transformative Purpose, it's all about something that's massive, it's going to create a transformation, and it becomes your purpose and mission of sort of why you're doing what you're doing. And the key statement that it keeps talking about is what is the biggest problem that uh, I'd like to solve? And the bigger the problem, the more chance you've got of being an EXO, okay, an exponential organization. What do I care about? Uh, what am I meant to be doing about it? Uh, what would I do if I could never fail? What would I do if I received a billion dollars today? These are some questions that are worth answering when you're selecting and coming up with your MTP, Massive Transformational Purpose. Uh, so those are a few more things to, to consider there. Another quick uh, uh, bite-sized thing, I really like, if you get a chance to read the book on a page 165, it talks about building a, a, a model canvas, okay? It's got this entire model here that you can go through, which I really like talks about what are your who are your key partners who are the key activities key resources what's your value proposition customer relationships that you have channels to market customer segments uh, cost structure and revenue streams and i know there's a lot of other models that are out there this business model canvas which was originally created by a gentleman called alexander uh, osterwalder who uh, popularized this by calling it the lean startup model. So I'm sure that through the book, with their research, they're also quoting other people who've created these models. And you can definitely check this out in maybe Alexander Osterwalder's book, which is called Value Proposition Design, How to Create Products and Services that Customers Want. So a quick reference there from this book to somebody else's book. So really, the whole Canvas model is about finding a really good business model and I'm going to share with you a few of the steps that they got here in building out the business model. Immediacy uh, is one of them. Immediacy is the reason people order in advance on Amazon or attend the theater on opening night. So this is a really cool uh, area to, to study when it comes to building the business model. Personalization is the second one. Having a product or service customized just for you not only gives added value, in terms of quality of experience and ease of use for functionality. Number three, three interpretation. Even if the product or service is free, there's still considerable added value to any service that can uh, still be considered as added value. And also software free, the, you know, the manual may be, but it, it, and then it goes on there and talking about the interpretation of value. It could be free, but it could have a value of $10,000. Authenticity. Uh, added value comes from a guarantee that the product or service is real and it's safe. Accessibility could be another way to build your model, uh, business model. Embodiment around digital information. Uh, patronage, uh, it's my belief that audiences want to pay creators and want to be part of a fan club. Uh, findability, I mean the list goes on. So what it does, it breaks down organizations like Uber, Airbnb, uh, GitHub, uh, and the Zappos, Amazon, Google, Netflix, and uses this model and these characteristics to look at how those companies have performed since they started and how they become how they became EXOs. So I found that really really interesting, and and then it goes into validate marketing and sales about acquisition. How do users locate you? Activation, do users have a great first experience or not? Retention, do users come back? Revenue, how do you make your money in having a value matrix? And referrals, do users tell other people? And these are just some of the characteristics of how you build a scalable business uh, with speed. Lastly, I'm just going to go towards the end of the book uh, and, and really briefly tell you about some of the things they've got in their appendix section, okay, about building your, your e EXO company. It's not fair for me to go through this in detail, buy the book and study it yourself, but I will share with you some of the headings. And what it gets you to do is score yourself. It's like a scorecard, and I love scorecards. So there's a scorecard on HR and asset management. 
and, and, and completing those three key questions. This community and crowd, so another two key questions to answer there. Engagement of community and crowd. And to give you an example on this one, it says, do you actively convert the crowd, the general public, into community members? Uh, and then a few more questions. Information and social enablement. Uh, to what extent are products and services information-based? Because that's the future. Data and algorithm section. Interfaces and scalable processes. Real-time dashboards and employee management experimentation and risk, autonomy and decentral decentralization, a couple of sections there, and then lastly, social technologies and social business. So a great scorecard. Check out the book. Okay, go online. You can get it from Amazon. You can get it from one of your bookshops. Don't forget to check out uh, the university. The details are in the bio. Come on, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Hit the like button, share, leave your comments if you've already studied the book before. And help me inspire many other family businesses and entrepreneurs with this small show that I've got on the channel. There's a lot of other shows on the channel. Family Business Legacies, Family Business Billionaires, uh, The Family Business Messenger, which is based on my strapline for, for this channel. Uh, go and check out the other videos and please come back again. I normally post two or three book video episodes every week as well as other show episodes. So make sure you come back and thanks for watching and see you all again 